Hello guys, welcome back to a new video on my channel. Today it is another challenge video. Last time we attempted to beat Neo Mario Galaxy while avoiding all star bits, and it was a complete success. Today we're going to take a look at Small Super Mario Brothers U. This hack is made by me. Oh, hey Mr. Bankton. Hello Bjorn, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine, I guess. I mean, you kind of scared me with the me. Oh, well. Uh, I'm sorry about that, man. No problem. Hey, while you're here anyways, do you want to join me for today's video? Um, that's actually what I'm here for. Oh, alrighty then. So, today, we're going to answer the following. Can you beat Small Super Mario Bros. U without collecting a single coin? Now, before we get into anything, we have to note the following things. The first thing is that we are going to replace the in-game coin counter with our very own coin counter. And that's because of two reasons. The first one being that there is no way to reset your coin counter unless you reset the game. And resetting the game takes about 1-2 to two minutes to do. Now, because this is such a small hack, we don't want to waste any useless time. Not to hate on your hack or anything. You probably get it, right? Yeah, yeah. I get it. Okay, so the second reason is that we both completed other levels coinless. What we mean by that is that I did 1-2, 1-3, and 1-5. And the Bjorn did the rest. And since there is no option to share your coin counter with other players or something, we'll be using our own one. The last thing we gotta note is that we are gonna look at every level individually. Because it is a small hack, just talking about the levels which are painful and not about the rest would lead to a 4 minute video, and I'm sure you guys like as much content as possible. With that out of the way, let's get to 1-1 one, one, tipping escape. This level is a nice start up since there is not much challenge in here. The only kind of difficult section is right here with this skill but when you do frame perfect jumps which aren't even that frame perfect you can easily get over them then you also have this skill with the koopa troopa but when you use the koopa as a platform to jump off of you'll easily jump over all these coins and that's all there is for one one so next we have one two pokey doki this mostly is an underground level where you have to dodge pokies while being annoyed by the quicksand this level has quite a few tricky parts. The first thing that you have to do is kill a big pokey at the start. And for that, you need the fire flower. Because you can't jump over it without touching some coins. And we don't want those coins. After that, you can pretty much just run to the pipe that takes you to the underground section. And it gets really troublesome. First up, we have to go under the first pokey we see and jump up to the other side. But we also have to go fast and run under some platforms so that we can and dodge the sneaky fire brother that tries to kill us. The mother f***er. When we are done with that, we have to do something we like to call high quality precision jumping to ride with a platform up and over some coins and dodge a piranha plant so we can get to the checkpoint. Now, you can also try to slide off of the wall and do a very precise wall jump, but don't do that. It will not end well. After this comes the trickiest part of the entire level. We have to somehow either jump over the coins or go under them. Then you will have to kill off all the pokies that you see. And then you want to spawn boost blocks. Yes, boost blocks are things that will help us here. If you don't know what they are, let me explain. When you play the game with any controller, but the gamepad, you can use the gamepad to spawn boost blocks to help you on your adventure. So what you want to do here is to spawn a boost block high enough so you can jump over the coins, but not too high so you can't jump onto the block anymore. Then you want to kill the pokey and spawn another boost block, which you need to jump off of to jump over the other coins. Oh my god, that's enough! Bjorn? Yeah? I wasn't done. Oh. Well, sh Okay, so at the end, there's a spinning circle of 4 coins, but when you do a small jump, then you should be okay. Boy, after that disastrous 1-2, we would like to see an easy level now. Uh, Bjorn? What? This is a tower level. Oh. Fu okay, calm down me. So, the tower doesn't start off easy like 1-1 one, one and 1-2. One, Instead, you got a spinning circle of coins with two paratroopers. Like in 1-2, we have to use the boost blocks to our advantage by spawning a staircase of two boost blocks to be able to dodge the coins. This isn't really that hard. The area inside the tower, however, is hard indeed. First up, you have to ride the snake train while avoiding these five coins there. 
Then you have a section with moving pipes and this is where it gets really troublesome. You have to get onto the left pipe and wait for the right pipe above you to be just at the right spot so you can pop onto it and dodge the coins. But that's not all. Finally you have to jump in between two pipes and avoid the coins above them. But this is not the hardest part of this level. Right after the checkpoint you can see a dry bone on a platform which has coins on both sides. When you're small Mario you can just jump under them but that's not possible when you're big Mario. So you have to get as much speed as possible then jump and do a ground pound to gain extra height in order to barely be able to reach a platform. But the level is not over yet. Really? Oh my f***ing god. So. Right after the section with the dry bone, you can see a snake train and the coins in a vertical shaft. What you have to do is jump onto the train when it almost passes the coins and then do a spin to make it up there. But we are still not done. When you encounter the last snake train, there is one section which is just stupid. You have a vertical shaft again with loads and loads of coins. Now, we first tried using the boost blocks but those won't help. What you have to do instead is wait on the right side when a train starts to go left and jump at the right moment. Oh my god. Finally the level is over. Good godly gracious. You know, it wasn't really that bad. Oh shut up. For 1 free, it is a pretty standard level. Nothing too challenging. First you can skip some coins by jumping on top of some palm trees and then over to a beach hut. There is a jump right here that you have to time very precisely. It's not too hard, but also not really easy. It's just at the right difficulty. The rest of this level is really easy too, so don't worry about this level. But don't forget that you can go in the water and under some buckets at the end of the level as well. It makes it a lot easier. On to 1-4, Attack of the Brothers. This level, unlike One Tower, is also really easy. You just gotta avoid some Goombas and Ice Bros. It isn't really that bad. But then you have this part here. At first glance, it might seem easy because you can jump over the coins. But there is a Fibro right after them. However, if you use the Goomba as a platform to jump off of, you will be okay. Or should I say, okie dokie? Huh? Get it? No. Oh. Okay. Anyway. By the way, you forgot the part before the fire bro where there is a set of coins right above the platform and you need to make a super precise jump to avoid the coins by running under them. <laughs> okay, so then you have the section right after the checkpoint where there are three coins at the exact path as where you need to jump. Make sure to be small Mario to make it easier for yourself to dodge these coins. Next. You have this P-Switch section. Now you'd think this P-Switch only transforms these coins into bricks, but nope. That's right, it also spawns dozens of coins which you need to avoid, and that can be really frustrating to do. But when you do some tricks, like spinning and small jumping, you will be just fine. And last but not least, well, kind of. At the end there is this staircase with a Koopa and a Goomba, and when playing through this level, this happened. Yeah, there is one freaking Kaiser block in this level. Seriously, why did you place this Mr. Benson? This is not Mario Maker. But I thought it would be helpful to get the hidden one up above, but apparently not. So, one floor is done and we have unlocked one castle. But before we go into that stage, let's first go to 1-5 and see if that one is possible as well. This level is a painted ghost themed level, and I like these kind of levels. Thank you for creating those, Mr. Bengtson. No problem, Bjorn. Alright, so the level starts off pretty easy as long as you have the acorn suit hidden in this question block into the hint hint. Just fly over the coins above the pipe and the three coins which guide you to jump there. The next part isn't really that bad too. Either duck under the coins or run under them as small Mario or use the acorn suit to fly below them. The part after the checkpoint isn't really hard too, but there are some things which might screw you over. As long as you use the acorn suit though, you are having an easy time in this course. By the way, there's one little thing I have to say. At the end, you have to jump up to the area where you normally would get the last store coin. Because if you take the warp pipe at the bottom route, it's not gonna end well. So, in short, this level is a piece of cake, even for Bjorn. 
right, Bjorn? Yeah, it was more than doable. So, finally, we have one castle. Are we really going to beat this hack with zero coins? Well, we'll see. So, one castle is all about those water bubbles. The logic in this level is kind of trash since the bubbles should have been molten a long time now, but whatever. So, the first part is surprisingly easy. Just jump over some coins and you will be fine. Wait, really? We used that phrase like three times already. Sorry, sorry, just move on, okay? Alright, the part after the checkpoint is really easy to until this part with three coins in a bow. At first, it might seem impossible to do when you're big Mario, but when you spam the jump button like crazy, then you can dodge those coins. Then you have this section where there are two paths. You want to take the bottom path because of, well, obvious reasons. And with that, one castle is done and so is the hack. So, can you beat Small Super Mario Bros. U without collecting a single coin? Yes, you can! Man, I love seeing challenges that are possible to do. You too, Mr. Bengtson? Obviously, and that's why I love your Neo Mario Galaxy challenge video. Oh, well, thanks. No problem. So, if you guys want to see more of Mr. Bengtson, make sure to check out his channel, because he makes some really amazing custom Mario levels, unlike me. I'm sure your levels are fine too. And if you want to see more collab videos, make sure to leave it in the comments, as I really love doing those collab videos. So do I. Anyways, this was the video for today. I hope I will see you <laughs> later in an... What? Uh, we. Oh, uh, we, uh, sorry. I hope we will see you in the next one. Uh, why we? I mean... I don't know, but... Anyway, goodbye. Good no problem. Hey, while you're at... Mm. You have to get onto the left pipe and wait for the right pipe. But we also have to go fast and run under some platforms so that we can dodge a sneaky fire broker that kind <laughs> I have to go Right after the checkpoint you can see a dry bone on a platform with ha- <laughs> You have to get onto the left pipe and wait for the right pipe what? When you encounter the last snake train er <laughs> Because you can't jump over it without touching some coins And we would don't want any nah, eh? <laughs> Again! At the end, there is this staircase with a Koopa and a Ju Joomba. Yeah, that, that's the new name of the Goomba, guys. <laughs> Joomba. A Goomba which jumps.